Hello, it is a nice quiet morning and I woke up quite early so I'm glad to have some extra reading time before work. Uh, although this this always happens to me, does this ever happen to you? I'll, I'll wake up quite early, totally bright eyed and fully awake and think, ooh, I have lots of extra time. And then around mid morning I find myself really flagging so I think I'm going to be really reliant uh, on tea today. Uh, anyway, I have a big pile of new books that I'm really eager to start diving into and some of these publishers kindly sent me and others I bought myself so I'm gonna go through and discuss each book and I'd love to hear if you're interested in reading it as well uh, or if you have read any of these books and if you would recommend them and also this video is very kindly sponsored by serious readers but I'll talk about them more uh, in a few minutes time now the first book I want to discuss I'm so uh, excited about this because this is is Rebecca Watson's new novel called I Will Crash uh, because uh, I read um, this author's debut called Little Scratch which really took me off guard like I, I got so into it and was really mesmerized um, by its style but uh, also the the story that it was telling um, so this novel um, follows a woman who has um, not seen her brother for six years, um, but then at the very beginning of the novel, um, I know because I started reading it, um, he shows up at her doorstep and um, suddenly she's confronted by him and um, by elements of the past which um, she thought were behind her. And so it follows this story and Rebecca Watson has this way of following the consciousness of her characters and their moment to moment thoughts in this kind of, um, you could call it a stream of consciousness style. I mean, very much in the tradition of Virginia Woolf, if Virginia Woolf was working today and, and writing um, uh, new fiction. Um, and uh, But uh, 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 it's so striking how she does it and, and has this way of, um, I'll show you, so there are kind of spaces uh, between lines and um, so it, it almost looks like it's, it's poetry, but it is in very much a prose style, which is very easy to follow and um, really like embeds you uh, in the consciousness of the, the character characters and in a way which is um, both humorous and charming but also really poignant um, so yeah I'm really looking forward to this. A really interesting sounding new literary novel is Napalm in the Heart by Paul Gouache translated from the Catalan by Mara Fay Lethem and this story follows a man in a deserted town who is trapped in this area and it's kind of a dystopian landscape um, there are like bands of thugs um, outside um, threatening um, but he uh, is looking for a means of escape and for reconnecting with his male lover um, who he writes letters to and uh, desperately wants to be together with uh, again. Uh, so a really intriguing sounding story and it's also been getting praised by so many authors that I really admire um, like Colm Toybean um, who uh, says uh, Paul Gouache creates an atmosphere that is menacing and powerfully dramatic, but he is also a poet who is interested in image and tone, in texture and rhythmic variation. Uh, and also the author Mariana Enriquez um, says, this is a punk novel with prose as mysterious as it is beautiful. I am so intrigued. Swift River by Essie Chambers. Uh, this is a novel which is set in New England in the summer of 1987. I'm um, following a girl who hasn't seen her father in seven years and um, she really misses him uh, but her mother um, tells her it's like better off um, that he's away uh, but she receives a letter from a relative that she's never met which keys her into new information about her father and her family life and this sets her off on a journey of discovery. Um, so this sounds like a wonderful story to read in the summer and also uh, it is praised by Paul Beatty, um, the Booker Prize winning author, who calls it a sensational debut. Rosarita by Anita Desai. Uh, this novel follows a young woman um, who's a student and she's sitting on a park bench when a woman approaches her and tells her that she looks exactly like her mother and that she knew 
her mother, but then she goes on to describe her mother in a way that uh, this girl doesn't recognize. And so um, she goes on this voyage of discovery to find out more about her mother's life that she didn't know before and to feel closer to her than she ever has before. Um, this is quite a, a short novel and it's written in the second person, which I always find a really curious um, style of narration where you feel uh, very close at, in, into the story and part of the, the story. But, um, but also, uh, yeah, it's a really unique um, way of like approaching character and and a plot. And I've um, read uh, some of Anita Desai's um, fiction before and really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to diving into this. As I mentioned in the beginning, this video is very kindly sponsored by Serious Readers, a company that creates excellent, high quality and long lasting indoor reading lights. And I know they last for a long time because I have been using this, my high definition light from Serious Readers for over a year and a half and I've never had any issues with it. It's very durable and it's become a trusted companion. Now, when I was younger, I would often read uh, at nighttime just using a little desk lamp that was very dim. And sometimes this is absolutely ridiculous. I would even read under moonlight because I thought it was very romantic. But of course, this is horrible for your eyes to put a strain on them in this way. And the wonderful thing uh, about Sirius lights is that they use what they call daylight wavelength technology, which replicates the daylight spectrum as close as technically possible. And this means that the light is really warm and natural and just a pleasure to read under. Um, recently, I have been reading Caledonian Road, which is our current book club choice, uh, using this light, um, which uh, is good because it's a very long book, um, so I need really good lighting for it. So if you are interested in getting um, an excellent new reading light, I would really recommend Serious Readers. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description below so you can check them out. And if you decide to buy one uh, when checking out, be sure to enter the offer code ERIC24, as this will save you £100 on a high definition light and give you free shipping within the UK. Uh, so let me know if you decide to buy one and let's all save our eyes and vision by only using the right quality reading lights. And now back to the books. The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera, um, which uh, this is a 40th anniversary edition of uh, this novel that has been dubbed a uh, modern classic, um, as it says at the, the very top. And uh, this is a, a story uh, about love and philosophy and affairs and complicated, messy human relationships. I feel like when I was in college, like all of the cool kids were reading this book. And for some reason, I never got around to reading it myself. So I'll be very keen to uh, explore it now. The Maniac by Benjamin Labatut. Uh, this novel um, primarily centers around a man from history called John von Neumann, um, who was uh, involved uh, in science and developing computer systems. Um, so very much uh, at the like forefront of um, the early days of AI. And uh, Benjamin Lovatot has this really unique way of blending um, fact and history with fiction um, to get at really the, the essence of ideas and uh, our stories. And um, so this first came out last year and it has just come out in paperback. Um, I had meant to, to read it when it first came out, but, um, but now uh, I have the paperback edition. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to finally diving into it. Little Joe, uh, this is an anthology of a zine uh, which uh, ran in the UK uh, from 2010 to 2021 and was edited by Sam Ashby, who's uh, an artist. And uh, this is uh, dubbed a, a book uh, about queers and cinema mostly. And uh, so I really enjoyed reading this scene um, when it came out because I'm really interested in, in cinema and queers. And, uh, and also, uh, my husband uh, wrote an essay uh, about a film um, which is included in this anthology. And uh, so that is really exciting to see. And I'm very proud. There are essays in here about Derek Jarman and Andrew Haig and The Little Mermaid and, and a piece by Kevin Killian. 
Kevin. So it's really a wonderful treasure trove. The Heart in Winter by Kevin Barry. Uh, this novel begins in Montana in the 1890s uh, within an Irish immigrant community and um, follows uh, a man who's a poet and a ballad maker, uh, but who's also a drinker and um, how he uh, takes a, a new wife of a woman who's um, newly arrived and how they set out west to make a life for themselves. Um, but they are followed by bandits and uh, it's about their adventures. And I just love Kevin Barry's writing. So, so excited about this new novel. Ghost Chili by Nikitha Bakshani. Uh, this novel follows a, a woman who has uh, just settled into uh, her new life in the big city. I'm um, having a good creative job and a circle of friends. But she also has a number of uh, messy uh, affairs and relationships and she has a distance from her family and there's a whole mystery about um, this separation that she has from her family. So it's very much about modern life. I think it's told in a very uh, in a very humorous um, and like relatable way. A Good Deliverance by Toby Clements. Uh, this is a historical novel set in England in the mid 1400s and following the life of Sir Thomas Mallory who was a politician and a writer and he wakes up one morning to find himself being seized and taken off to jail and set for execution. Uh, but a young boy enters his cell and to him, um, he relates the, the story of his very dramatic life. Um, Hilary Mantel, the late great Hilary Mantel, was a fan of this author. Um, she says Toby Clements writes the most enthralling kind of historical fiction. The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. This novel is a thriller about a family in a town who are very concerned about their own reputation and their son goes missing and uh, so there's a wide search party for him um, but he's never found and uh, many of the townspeople are suspicious um, of this family of whether they were involved in it themselves and then 15 years later they've had a daughter who also goes missing in the woods and isn't to be found. So it re revives all of this local gossip about her. And uh, so, yeah, it's meant to be a very thrilling story. Um, the author and Booker Prize winner, Douglas Stewart, um, is a fan. He says it is sharp, layered, and riveting. The Paris Muse by Louisa Traeger. Uh, this novel is set in Paris in 1936 and follows the life of a real-life historical woman named Dora Mar. Um, who was an artist and a photographer and who had a long-term affair with Pablo Picasso and uh, she became uh, his muse uh, but they had a very rocky relationship um, as Picasso had with uh, many different women and uh, there was a 25 year age difference uh, between them and I, I have said that I, I'm uh, not all that interested in reading about uh, the affairs between uh, young women and uh, toxic older men but I think this will give a really interesting insight um, both into her art and Picasso's art and the time period of the Spanish Civil War and um, what occurred between them. A Little Rot by a Queque Meze. Uh, this novel follows five characters over the course of a turbulent weekend as they engage in a exclusive uh, sex party and their messy relationships uh, with each other, but how they're also drawn into the corrupt and glittering underworld uh, of the city. Uh, I find it really interesting uh, that uh, this author is uh, described as uh, the agenda-setting uh, best-selling author. I don't know what uh, agenda that they're setting, um, but uh, but yeah, um, it sounds like a really fun story. And finally, there is Teddy by Emily Dunlay. This novel follows a woman named Teddy Huntley Carlyle, and it's set in Rome in 19. 1969 um, when the, the city is full of glamour and intrigue and she is newly married and she's 
been in a lot of trouble in the past, but she decides she wants to be good now. Uh, but then after a big party, she is photographed in the arms of another man and it sets off a big scandal. Um, I am drawn to this book um, just because it sounds so silly and fun and it feels exactly like something that would be in that sketch um, Lucky Bitches of uh, Don French um, saying oh, my new steamy sexy novel. <laughs> and if you've never seen uh, that sketch by French and Saunders of Lucky Bitches, um, then I'd really urge you to go watch it because uh, it is a joy and so funny. Um, so those are all the books that, uh, new books that I want to discuss. Like I said, I'd love to know uh, if you have read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of them now. And I hope you have a good day and I'm going to go make myself some more tea and hopefully make it um, through today while reading um, a lot and uh, getting some work done. And so I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.